The HUDC estate Brattle View will be privatized. It is the last of 18 HUDC estates to go private, and this marks the end of an era. 918 flats and two shops will be affected. The estate was developed in two phases on two separate land leases, each with different expiry dates. So the leases will have to be harmonized before privatization moves forward. Now, HUDC units, a little background, they were introduced in the 1970s for middle-income families who could afford bigger flats and all of them were on 99-year leases. And in a blog post today, National Development Minister Corbyn Wan said, HUDC estates remain testament to the creative ways in which housing needs of Singaporeans are met. For instance, demand for HUDC flats dwindled in the 80s as more resale flats started to flood the market. Executive flats were then introduced as a housing option Option, and they've since been phased out to make room for executive condos. Mr. Kaur says housing policies are dynamic and they evolve with changing circumstances. So to discuss this is Koo Sui Yong, CEO of Century 21 Singapore. Uh, Sui Yong, great to have you with us today. So last one to go private uh, is the end of an era. Yes, um, we would miss it. I hope that uh, we've got lots of photography and shots to capture these HUDC estates. But, um, what would you say about the timing of the privatization? The timing of the privatization might be relatively good now for the current homeowners because we are expecting the prices of the residential market to trend down. Mm -hmm. Prices of uh, HDB resale has already shown a significant uh, drop in the last two quarters. So over the next six to nine months, as the homeowners get into the thick of the privatization process, chief valuers valuation of their land for the top up of the lease for half of these owners might actually turn out to be a little bit lower than they have estimated, let's say in the last year. So it might be a benefit to start the ball rolling now. Okay, it's a huge piece of land though, Brattleview. Yes, this piece of land, um, as in comparison with Yunosville that tried to go on block last year for a price tag of over 600 million, this piece of land is at least two and a half times the size of Yunosville. But of course, its plot ratio is slightly lower at 2.1 compared to Yunosville's 2.8. So any developer keen to buy this piece of land would definitely have to fork out way in excess of a billion dollars wow. just for the land purchase before construction costs. Now, that is the negative part about this exercise mm -hmm. because as we move into 2014, 2015 and as the oversupply of private residences kick in, um, developers may not be that bullish or that gung-ho about okay. going after such a large investment. But uh, what does this mean for residents though? I mean, what would they want? You know, would everybody want this to go on block then? I think if you didn't even take a first step to get yourself um, privatized, you would have no chance to even move forward with an on block. But right now, the cost benefits then would have to weigh in. In the Shunfu, for example, when they were privatized, each homeowner paid about $30,000. Now, if we were to ask the 900, homeowners here, whether they would be willing to pay an average of about 30,000. Um, would they all sign up? Would they be able to get 75% to agree to sign up? So that's, I think, would be a big challenge. Okay, Sui Young, let's talk about another issue uh, that's been in a spotlight lately in the property, in the property news. It's 60-year leasehold developments. Uh, let's have a look at it. When Singapore's first 60-year leasehold property was mar well, is marketed as a retirement village, it sold out on its first day of sale, if you remember. It also got a lot of analysts talking about its investment value. Uh, many analysts were saying that the prices at the Hillford, this is it, were on the high side. They still felt it fell within expectations, but it also raised the big question of whether properties like this 60 year old or 60 year leasehold residents targeted at retirees would be a one-off experiment or the first of more to come already the profile of the buyers is worth scrutinizing apart from seniors the buyers were young couples with elderly parents newlyweds and young single professionals so Sui Young, let's talk about this when you were a first launched this 60 year leasehold pilot about two years ago uh, what were your concerns then and have they materialized now there were many bidders and the winning bid seemed a little bit high but of course we didn't know the plans of the developers then. But now that the plans of the de developer is made known, we know that they have strata titled it, they have made very small units out of it mm -hmm. and they are pricing it at um, a quantum 
from around $400,000, which is very attractive to the market. However, when you look at it on a dollar per square foot basis, over the 60 year of lease, then it seems to be a little bit high, especially when if this product were targeted at retirees, you would then expect that retirees want to probably store up some cash for their use in the retirement years. So they would look for something that is uh, comfortable and within uh, financial comfort as well, not just okay. physical comfort. Now, there are alternatives in the HDB Studio 30-year lease scheme, which are at 90 over thousand dollars. There are also older 99-year properties, say those that are left with 70 years, or even Brother View, for example, that might but the, the sizes are relatively larger, but the quantum, the dollar per square foot would be at seven, eight hundred dollars per square foot, much more attractively priced than this. As so, a retail. Uh, so, uh, you know, in terms of property value or investment value, do, do you see it as something uh, that will have a lot in the future? I I think it is a little bit questionable whether there's real investment value. As a retiree, if you were to buy it, use it, and then your children inherited it from you in 25 years' time, your children would find it very difficult to find a buyer to take over this property because banks do not want to give loans for properties that have less than 30 years of lease. So the transfer process would be a hindrance. So what sort of investment value could it be down the road? Investors are also looking to make a, well, some of them saying that they might make a fat profit because of projected rental income. Some are saying that they'll get about $2,200 $2, a month. Do you think that's realistic and what's your prediction? I think that projection is definitely on the high side because if you were to look at a low budget family with $2,000 for rental, what might be available within the Hillview, Bukit Batuk district? HDB flats that are more than twice the size, say a thousand square feet for four room HDB in Bukit Batuk would be at the low $2,000 per month range and it is more than twice the size. So it, it is very difficult for me to find many bits of jewels to, to, to say that this product is worth investing in. But still we have to give it a chance, right? When it's ready in about two years' time, uh, there'll be things that we'll be looking at. Let's start with the buyer profile and the occupant profile. What do you expect to see out of that? Yes, so the jury definitely is still out. It could still end up to be a very successful retirement village because the buyer profile says nothing about the tenant profile. In two years' time when the project is completed, it could be 95% occupied by retirees who are enjoying the facilities as well as the um, silver hair type of services that are supposed to be provided in the retail shops downstairs. So for all we know, it could be wildly successful as a trial. However, what the authorities would need to learn from this process is what sort of restrictions they might want to place on developers bidding for the next piece of 60-year leasehold retirement village residential property. Especially to make sure that they or the developers fulfill their obligations, especially when it's targeted at uh, retirees. Exactly. Yep. Uh, say in three to five years' time after completion, <coughs> what will convince you that these 60-year-old or 60-year leasehold projects uh, targeted at older or seniors uh, should continue? I think we want to see firstly the mix of tenants that are in the shops, in the retail space on the ground floor. Secondly, we need to see the tenant profile of the residential units upstairs. And then let's see whether the tenants both upstairs and downstairs would be able to um, com complement each other. Is there enough business provided say by the TCM uh, shop downstairs? And can that business actually justify for itself based on the retired tenants? So if upstairs. not short lease properties like this one to cater to the elderly, uh, what would you like to see the government do? If the government could actually impose tighter um, limits on making it a retirement village, for example, not to, if they were to strata tighter to sell, then they have got to be tied down to only a certain age and above sort of tenant. Now, of course, um, the standard reply would be that we do not know when people would like to retire. Somebody at 40 years old might choose to retire okay. early. So, okay, <laughs> let's then have a few targeted segments. Definitely, we want to see the retirement village concept work, but why not let's cut off by starting with 60 years old first or 65 years old, depending on a CPF withdrawal age. And with that experiment, two or three parcels of land later, Let's look at the tenant profile. Let's look at whether there's a resale component as well as whether there's a speculative elements inside this product. 
before we fine-tune the rules even further. But there's no escaping from the fact that Singapore is an ageing society. All right, thank you very much, Su Yong. It's great speaking to you. Always very insightful. And that was Ku Su Yong with his take on the future of short lease properties in Singapore targeted at retirees. And earlier, we were also discussing HUDCs as well. Next on the show,